Thank you. There is Cheryl Pounder, there's Frankie Corrado, and Darren Drager. So you go back to the start of the playoffs, and the Oilers cruise past Cam Talbot and David Riddick in round one. Arthur Shelofs, the kid, played really well for Vancouver, but they eventually get to him and the Canucks late in that series. And even Jake Ottinger, with his terrific resume, they had no problem with him and the Dallas Stars. So fair to say they had not seen a wall like the one Sergei Bobrovsky put up tonight. We're about to do about a half an hour of analysis. <laughs> but in essence, did they just Where get goalied? Start? Is it yeah. as simple as that? This was one of those nights where nothing was going to go in. And, and we started to see the body of work grow for Sergei Bobrovsky as this game went on. And as he started to accumulate these saves, you started to think, okay, it's going to take something very, very special or something very, very greasy for the Edmonton in Oilers in order to beat Bobrovsky tonight and they didn't get anything special. They didn't get the dry sidle one-timer that goes top corner right under the bar. They didn't get the Zach Hyman greasy goal. They ended up generating a lot of great chances. They had a couple breakaways but that leads to the body of work of Sergei Bobrovsky and as he got into that rhythm the Edmonton Oilers had a hard time beating him. Bobrovsky's confidence grew and this is something that everyone was expecting to come to the forefront at some point in this series. In game one, the Edmonton Oilers absolutely deserved a better outcome. The Florida Panthers, you could say, didn't necessarily deserve to win that game, but Sergei Bobrovsky was the reason why. Well, and he's been very good throughout the playoffs, but there's been a lot of perimeter shots, but not tonight. A lot of grade A scoring chances. Mm. And one of the things I really noticed was how aggressive he was being, getting outside the top of the paint. And there's one reason why you can do that, right? You're challenging the shooter because you know you've got D that are going to make sure they take away the sticks back door. They're going to make sure they're clearing net front. The guys like Ekblad, Montour, mm. of course, Forsling. So a guy like Bobrovsky can really challenge. He was dialed in and he was incredible tonight. Well, they allowed him to become a big story to open up the series and now they're going to have to find a way because undoubtedly the Florida Panthers are going to try and tighten up. That first period, even though the Oilers trailed, was a rock solid Edmonton Oilers period of hockey. But it's missed chances from Edmonton's perspective that they're gonna look back on and say, look, we should have capitalized. Maybe some game one jitters. It is the Stanley Cup final, but on the power play, they had some real good looks. You're gonna see Zach Hyman here in tight. He goes up high and wide after making a real nice play in front of Bobrovsky. And then you had Ryan Nugent Hopkins. He's gonna lose sleep over that one tonight because he had a good portion of the net essentially wide open and he too fires it high so again Bobrovsky was terrific the story of the opening game of the Stanley Cup final but the Oilers also made him look good uh, the story also from Florida's offensive end is they score on the first shot of the game and then the first shot of the second period and I mean I don't Skinner was fine I think most of the yeah. night but yeah. there was something in common and it was the pairing of CeCe and Nurse that were on for both of those goals and what were the fatal mistakes they made. You learn very quickly playing against the Florida Panthers that the puck gets to the net in a hurry yeah. and the nurse CC pairing is going to rewatch the tape and they're going to learn that again because both instances where this deep pairing gets burned the puck goes to the net in a hurry. First it's off the rush and the puck is in the middle of the ice as it goes to the perimeter it's coming right back to the net and the two on one situation comes to the forefront in front of Cody Ceci. He's not able to get to Barkov before it happens. And then this is something where Sam Bennett, he's just in on a forecheck, outworks Cody Ceci. Darnell Nurse isn't expecting this puck, but there it is right in front of the net again. It's two different lines. It's two different situations. But in both of those situations, the puck goes to the net in a hurry. And that line, that deep pair, doesn't have to be spectacular for the Edmonton Oilers, but it cannot be the reason they lose a game. And in this game, they're minus two. Lots more ahead from this trio, but we're getting post-game reactions starting to come in from Florida. Let's start with the Oilers' Zach Hyman. Um, obviously, they've, they've got some good players. They're, they're quick. Uh, they four-check wall. They hang on to the puck wall. They're a good team. Um, I thought we had our looks in the game, but uh, we couldn't capitalize. You said that it was... Uh, yeah, I mean, he made the saves on the on the wide open nets, too. So it's not like we, we missed it. Um, yeah, hey, listen, I mean, it happens. What you say? Study video and find an answer to, or is it just something that you got to keep pushing until the boundaries? No, you just, I mean, 
uh, <laughs> I've had a lot of chances in my career, and you just continue to get them, and eventually they're going to go in. And when they go in, they go in bunches. Sometimes you got an amazing look, it doesn't go in. Other times it hits your shin pad and goes in. It, it's a, Hockey is a funny game. You just The key is, is to not get frustrated. You just continue to play. You play your game, and that's why it's a seven-game series. And you go out there and, and you, do, you execute. I think, I mean, I liked our game. We had our looks. Tonight we didn't score on them, but I mean, I'm pretty confident that our team's capable of scoring. Zach, was that just a case of you made a couple of mistakes and they made you pay on a couple of mistakes? It wasn't like you made very many, but they made mm-hmm. mistakes. No, I thought, I mean, first and foremost, I thought Stu played well. I mean, I thought he gave us a chance in that game to, to, to come back. Um, yeah, they made a couple of plays and they, they bear down. They scored um, on a couple of nice plays. Um, we didn't score on ours. It's 2 nothing, and they get the empty net. So, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it was a close game. How did you, you guys feel your about power play looked overall? Good. I thought we had looks. I mean, that's, that's the key. I mean, you continue to get high-quality looks, and you continue to stick with your process. And if we play like we did today, I'm very confident in our group. Well, I didn't like the result, obviously, but um, I mean, I, I thought that we were able to skate. I mean, I think I think uh, the key to our game is skating and and forechecking and hanging on to pucks in the ozone, making plays. Um, I thought for a lot of the part, lots of that game, we were the team that was pushing. Um, yeah, we didn't come out on top today. You said it was a field. Now here's Oilers defenseman Darnell Nurse. Yeah, I think uh, you know. I, we did a lot of things within our game. I think that uh, we liked, and there's a few things we need to clean up. So, um, you know, you, you regroup. Don't like the result, but you regroup and get ready for game two. Everyone talked about how, you know, they're a very physical team. But it looks like your speed really kind of negated their physicality. How, how did you see that? that you, how was it affecting your speed? Was it yeah, I think there was some physicality both ways. Um, and then, yeah, for sure. I think when we get to our, our speed game, it, uh, you know, allows us to, to play with an advantage against uh, you know, any team, but uh, of course, you got to continue that uh, into game two. What do you see on their on their second goal? Oh, it's just uh, you know, it wins a puck race and goes through my wicket, so I get a piece of it. Obviously, Bobrovsky was lights out, but do you guys feel like you deserved better of shooting them like 33 18, I think? Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you got to continue to create the chances that I think uh, we create tonight. and. You know, at, at some point, find a way to to break through. Um, yeah, really good night. And I think, obviously, they committed to collapsing down when there's chances in front of that, too. So, um, you know, they, they found the right result tonight. We regroup and get ready for game two. It seemed like you guys are regarded as a better rush team in terms of offense and maybe not so much than they scored the goal off the rush. What do you think of the way they attacked off the rush? Today? Yeah, I mean, they, they scored a nice goal off the, off the rush and made two good plays. So, um for us, that's probably an element of our game that we can get to, too, um, if we continue to break the puck out and um, you know, force some out- outnumbered situations. You saw his frustration on the bench after that second goal, and we're yeah. the readers. I'm saying, sorry, sees that one's on me. Were you surprised they left that pairing together? I, I was. We should ask the NHL defenseman what he thought. But, you know, because it happened so early, relatively early, you know, they're down 2 nothing in the second period. You know, they didn't look great, as he illustrated prior to the interviews, on the one nothing goal. So the way that Knobloch likes to make in-game changes, I was a bit surprised. But I, I guess you're looking at Kulak and Broberg if you're going to split up Nurse and CeCe. But they've got Vincent Dernay, who's sitting on the sidelines now, right? Like, he was taking out in the Western Conference Final based on the physicality that they knew they were going to face in the Florida Panthers. 63-35. They were out hit by Florida tonight. I'd be surprised if we don't see DRNA in the series soon. If I was going to read into that, keeping that deep pair together, it's kind of like the coach just saying, you guys just need to be better and you need to figure it out. Like, no one's coming to fix it for you. Mm -hmm. And let's be honest, like, outside of those two situations, which are two critical situations, they come back after and they play a pretty solid game. Other than that, the problem is you can't give up those two goals and you can't make those two big blunders. Yeah, and you mentioned, you know, who you're going to take out of that lineup and you're That's mentioning drags like Broberg part. was 17 plus minutes. So yeah. when you look at Played that well. lineup, the big question mark is who would you take out to put Darnay in? It's probably not fair for us to say the Oilers just got goalie by Borowski. Look, he's the star of the game. He's the reason they won. But we saw a lot of why the Panthers are here, mm-hmm. starting with Barkov. 
match up against the greatest player in the world and he comes out with a brilliant assist and the other guy has nothing. Yeah, well, the, the greatest player in the world has gone up against the best two-way center in the world right now, and, and that's a matchup we've been all been looking for. And certainly Barkov did a great job of it. It's his awareness on the ice and his positioning on the ice. A lot of the time he was F3 in the offensive zone because he knew that when it changed hands, he had to be in good position. But this is just masterful. I mean, his positioning right from his own end to get above McDavid on the outlet pass. Then he kicks it, but the position and drive he takes towards the net. He He's going to draw the defender to be able to kick it to Verhage. But man, oh man, he knows how to shadow. He's got an active stick. You have to have a great stick. And listen, the best way to defend McDavid yep. is to have the puck. And so Barkov not afraid to carry and possess that puck when it's on his stick, not just getting rid of it. And that's a guy with that situational awareness that really, really showed tonight. And I thought he was really effective, even though McDavid mm -hmm. did get some opportunities. About 98% of the time, Stuart Skinner would take giving up two goals, knowing mm -hmm. the offense he has on that hockey team, but not enough to tonight against Bobrovsky. Let's hear from the Oilers goaltender. Yeah, um, even though we let in the first one, I think that um, our team played another, I would say, full 60. Um, we were amazing for the for the whole game. We really pushed. Um, Bob was absolutely massive for them and uh, mm -hmm. big reason why they were able to win. How big is that? Leading going forward the series, knowing that you can ha you have that game in you against this team. I'll yeah, like yeah, it, uh, obviously makes us feel confident um, that we're able to play a game like that for a full 60. But at the same time, uh, losing a game like that where you do play your full 60, um, you know, makes you need uh, need to get a little bit more of a push, um, especially the way that, uh, you know, we can start and not get down on this team. What is it like, Stu, when you're at your end watching the other guy play as well as he played at his end? Yeah. Um, to be honest, it's uh, I'm just – watching uh not much i can do um it, he made some spectacular saves and uh, i can't do anything but say wow that was a really nice save <laughs> uh, so. this was your first round of this how did you feel just kind of nerves wise energy wise is kind of what you were expecting and, and how did you feel about the goals that you did give up yeah uh, i felt really good felt really normal uh through the whole way and then uh Right, right before warm, warm up started i started to get a, c a couple of butterflies in the stomach um which is always uh very fun because it just means you're so you're very excited and that you're uh, you know you love that you love what you're doing um, so yeah I got uh, got a couple of butterflies and once I stepped on the ice it was uh, you know I felt good again because it was just back to work so when they score earlier you're thinking I need to get a couple of saves and then score all of a sudden you know, right the you're hoping for it anyways um, but yeah they uh, they made a nice play had a nice goal and um, can't do much after that, so it's just re, uh, rebounding and uh, doing your best to make the next save. You've, you've had an a unlucky few weeks in the playoffs where the first shot of the game is like a grade-A chance like tonight. Uh, obviously, you'd like to get a couple easy ones first to feel the puck, but is, when they have such a good chance, they score on the first shot, does it really matter when the first one goes in? Does it make a difference what kind of chance it was? Um, that question honestly brings up uh, when we went on a really big run, and I felt like almost the whole, every game uh, in the 16 game winning streak, we let in the first shot, um, and it, and we were able to show our resiliency just like we did tonight. Um, and letting in the first goal is obviously a dagger because you never want obviously you never want to let in a goal, but uh, it's all about how you respond in those moments. And I think that our team uh, did an incredible job at that. What's Bob feeling right now? I mean, you've seen you've been on the other side. What is he feeling? Yeah. Um, that's a tough question for me to answer. Um, <laughs> if I, I mean, I, yeah, I have been on the other side of that. You, you, you feel good, um, but at the same time, you know that you got a, a job to do. Um, Florida knows just as well as we do that you need four wins to, you know, take it home. So, uh, you know, one win isn't going to do that. So it's going to be a big push on their end, I'm sure, next game. Um, as well as ours. Uh, I think both teams aren't uh, exactly satisfied. Yeah, it was a nice shot. Uh, a little bit of a broken play. Got on their four check. Uh, got it to the slot and made a nice shot. Um, yeah, um, there's a few things I'm sure I could do. I, I'd have to look back on it. Um, it's not too fresh in my mind because it was in the second period. So uh, I'll look back on it and get better from it. So Oh, like what we were saying? Yeah. 
Um, yeah, I mean, he, that's kind of, yeah, like he's, he's amazing uh, down low. He's also amazing up high. Like it, it's hard to beat him. He's, uh, he's an incredible goalie, but yeah, he, he does a great job sealing the ice and um, you just got to somehow find a way to score a goal on him. That's kind of been the MO for uh, all series that we've played and we've been playing some top end goaltenders um, and it's never easy to beat these guys. And now Oilers captain, Connor McDavid. Um, yeah, I thought there was lots to like, to be honest. Um, I thought we had lots and lots of looks and um, didn't give up too much. Um, what we did give up was dangerous, and um, they capitalized. That's what good teams do. Oh, there was that cut on the Bennett hit, or is that something? No, before. Before, it was just a nice day. Can, you, can your team play much better than that and not win? Uh, can the team play much better than that and not <laughs> yeah, win? Yeah, it's <laughs> tough one. That's a... Gotta give me a minute with that. Um, like I said, there was there was lots to like. Um, we generated chances. We had looks. Um, not a ton of puck luck um, around their net. Um, some weird plays in there, but um, they're a good team. Um, give them credit. They did enough to win. What did it feel like? Dominate them like that. How much does that help you moving forward in the series? Knowing that you can play like that against them. Yeah. Um, you know, I know how many people gave us a chance in this series and. Um, I think we showed tonight that we can play with them. Um, you know, that's a confidence booster for this group, but we know that um, our best can play with anybody. And um, yeah, disappointing. What did it feel like uh, at the, uh, the lead up, the, the anthem, the seeing the Stanley Cup at center ice? Or like, what did it all feel like for you before the game? Yeah, it was, uh, you don't know, usually get intro in the road barn, so that was, uh, <laughs> that was different, but. Give them a good chance to uh, give us a good boo, but um, <laughs> pretty funny, you know. All all uh, all part of the the experience, and um, yeah. You never know what team until you play them, mm -hmm. and you can do all the tape and all the studies, and everything else. What did you find out tonight, other than the score from from this game? They're as advertised. Um, they're 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 exactly what they look like on TV, um, and what everyone says. They're aggressive. They play hard. Um, they're fast, um, and they work. Um, you know, they were uh, they were as advertised. Did you guys have to go upstairs on Bob? Or there was a lot of chances that he made kick saves. Yeah, he gets low. He gets low. Um, you know, he does a great job of taking away the the lower part of the net. And um, yeah. Connor, obviously, you want to see from the power play tonight. A lot to like again. You know, similar to the five on five game. A lot to like. Thought we generated looks. Um, Similar to their five on five, their identity is their identity to be aggressive, and their kill is just the same. You know, they're coming always, um, and if you make a couple of good plays, you're going to get a good chance. Connor, aside from not scoring, is there anything you feel like you would have done differently in this game? Seems like a lot was going right for you, as you said. Um, yeah, maybe a couple of plays here and there. Um, you'd certainly like to bear down and 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 and, and find a way to uh, to get one. Um, you know, just make one more play. Um, you know, something, find something that uh, that we that we weren't able to find. Remember when Daryl Sutter and the Kings were on their run? And if you watch Daryl Sutter's post-game news conferences, if you didn't know the score, you could not tell if no. they won or lost. <laughs> and McDavid has sort of taken on that persona where he's exactly even keel whether they won or lost. And more example of that there. We waited nine long years to watch the best player in the world play on the biggest stage in the game, and. I, we got a lot of McDavid flash, but nothing to show for it. Your evaluation of his game one. Well, I thought he shot out of a cannon to start the game. You could certainly tell that he was amped up. He, you know, he was really moving his feet, trying to garner some speed underneath the puck where he's most lethal, where he can go left or right. But in particular on that first shift, I just thought, listen, they got a grade A chance, and Bobrovsky was able to take that away. And if he doesn't take that away, guess what? This could be a very different game. This is highly contested ice, and McDavid was still able to get six shots on goal. I mean, you can throw the kitchen sink at this guy and he's still going to find a way. He is just that good. Playing over 25 minutes and including 5 minutes and 32 seconds. Drawing a penalty on the power play. So, uh, you know, here's a guy defensively who's doing everything coming back through the middle to take away opportunity. He, he said it. He said, listen, you've got to put a couple nice plays together to generate and get your looks. And guess what? McDavid got his looks in this game and certainly felt like he could have gotten on the board. He could have had the points. It just didn't drop for him. And Bobrovsky was, was key in that. Every year when you go to the playoffs whether you're one of the best players or one of the worst players, healthy mm -hmm. scratch like I was, people will say, you just don't know if you're going to get back here again. 
And for Connor McDavid, this is his first opportunity to win a Stanley Cup, and he's finally arrived yeah. at the party. And you could just tell watching him play how badly he wants this, how badly he wants to win a Stanley Cup. And when you look at his individual play, he's one of those players where he will go there and say, I'm going to put the team on my back and try and beat everyone with an individual effort. We saw a couple of these throughout the course of the night, and that's par for the course with Connor McDavid. But against the Florida Panthers, if you're going to try and beat four players, the way they play defense, the way they can attack the puck and, and defend, it's going to be very difficult to do. But you can just see how badly Connor McDavid wants it. He's finally got to the dance, yeah. and he wants to finish it off. Oilers have all that flash and dash, and the Panthers just have so much grit, <laughs> and that's probably personified in Sam Bennett, who is physical and a little bit nasty sometimes. But one of the reasons that Florida is so good and particularly good with a lead. Yeah, and he's a lot more healthy now than he was even in the Eastern Conference Final against the New York Rangers. I mean, they were protecting him in terms of the face-offs, yet you look at the draws that he took in Game 1 in the Stanley Cup Final, and he's 80% off face-offs, where the Florida Panthers at times were dominant. What's unique about Bennett and Sasha Barkov is the fact that they love playing defensive hockey. Yeah, they can provide the offense, and Bennett did that with the assist on the Rodriguez 2-0 goal. But they love the defensive side, and they're physical in how they distribute their game. He had 11 hits in Game 1 to go along with that assist and 80% off face-offs. I mean, if you're Paul Maurice and you're looking at the experience, you've got full buy-in throughout all four lines. They play very similarly. But how happy do you think the, the coaching staff is uh -huh. when they can throw Barkov out there against McDavid and then Bennett against Dreisaitl? Or either one. Oh, yeah. It doesn't matter. It They're there. just that dialed in. And one of the biggest challenges and what everyone maybe wanted to see is how is Sam Bennett going to toe the line here with the yeah. physicality, yeah. the stuff after the whistle, making sure that you're disciplined, 11 hits, does a good job, and you're not yeah. thinking, man, he, he put his team at a disadvantage. Like, he did a good yeah. job of towing the line in this game. Uh, let's hear from Oilers head coach Chris Knobloch. You know, you, game six, you probably didn't play your best game and won it. This game here, you probably played better than your opponents and lost it. Just a thought on the game, and how can you build on this performance moving forward, having dominated them territory like you did tonight? Well, I think we get carried away if we say dominated, but um, I thought overall we played a pretty good game. Um, you know, we had some chances to score goals, and they didn't go in. Um, we know that... Um, Florida probably, well, that wasn't their best game. Anticipate them to be much better the next one. I think they probably caught it off guard, just you guys talking about how, how good they were and we didn't have a chance in this series. Uh, but yeah, we'll, there's a lot of things I liked about our game, but we know that we're going to have to get even better. Front row left, Mark. Yeah, Chris, when you have a team that has that volume of chances and can't convert, can you? How coach them or video them over the top, or is it just up to the, you know, high-end scorers you have to figure it out themselves and, and make a play? There's definitely things that we can um, target. Every goalie has strengths and weaknesses. Um, every system that you play has strengths and weaknesses. So there are things that, as a coach, we can address. And there's also just um, the element of luck. You know, that goes through the regular season playoffs. Sometimes pucks go in. Like we had uh, game six, we had two goals on 10 shots. It was a good night for us. Um, and it doesn't always work out that, you know, you're going to score on 8% of your chances because that's what they say it should go in or whatever it is. But um, yeah, I think there was an, a good sh share of opportunities for us to score. Um, but there are things that we're going to have to look at and try and increase those chances. Left side, Pierre. Over here, Chris, uh, in the door frame here. Um, you talked this morning about hoping that the standard would be maintained and that, that the penalties that should be called should be called. And um, certainly three, getting three power play chances is a different game for you guys in one, as we've seen in these playoffs. You got your three and obviously didn't score, but a lot of looks. So what do you take from what Florida did on their PK and, and the amount of grade eight looks you still got just didn't finish? <laughs> I think, um, as I said earlier, every system has uh, pros and cons. And um, whether it's five on five, penalty kill, whatever it is, you have a system. And there's obviously strengths to it and uh, weaknesses. Otherwise, everyone would be doing something. And, you know, I think their pressure is good. And, um, 
you know, as long as we're ready for it and, and can anticipate it, we can um, get some really good scoring chances. And I think a couple times we were able to do that. Um, but, um, you know, I think it's just the execution about power play is just, um, you know, finishing your play and making a pass. And, you know, we did, and we did, and we did. And we saw, we saw Alice here, Alice here. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't. Sorry about the video at the end there, but we, we get the point of where Knobloch is. Uh, and it's interesting, you, you heard all of those Oilers all spinning positive, as you're going to do, and they have reason to do because they played really well. And there's a ton of, we had our looks, ton of positive to take from this. And Knobloch's sort of the cautionary side of it is saying, yeah, Florida wins this game and they did not give us their best game. And mm -hmm. so that's another way to look at it. Like I think Paul Maurice kind of loves winning a game like this because he has a couple days now to say we didn't play very well and you'd expect a much better Florida effort in game two wouldn't you that well that's exactly where where you go if you're the Florida Panthers like the next meeting that that team has is going to say okay we got our game one win we got our I don't know you're not going to call it a freebie your yeah. goalie stole one for you but now you know you can play much better than that mm -hmm. and now for Edmonton like their conversation has to be like, is the offense really going to be this hard to come by? Like, even on the power play, even at five on five, yep. is Bobrovsky going to be able to do this to us every single night or more often than not? And can Stuart Skinner steal a game the way Bobrovsky did, hmm. which, you know, would remain to be seen? And sometimes does it just reset, you know, that you drop the puck in that second game and it's all for naught and you get out there and you do it. I, I just think when you look at the lineup collectively, I look at the Edmonton Oilers, I'm looking at that third line, call it your fourth line, whatever you might be with Enrique, uh, Brown and Yamark. And I thought they were pretty effective tonight. But again, you have to capitalize on those opportunities. You get those opportunities, those chances, you got to find a way to fill the four by six. And, and they didn't, you know, there's breakaway opportunities. They played well defensively, but just weren't able to convert on it. So yeah. get into your head. But listen, like Knobloch said, you know, we had 10 shots yeah. and we won the game. Mm -hmm. So it, it's interesting. It's all about execution. Florida has been a very disciplined team to this point in the playoffs. They, they have been. So you, when you look at some of the areas that they're going to focus on, they're going to maintain their level of physicality. I didn't think that they tried to run the Oilers out of the building in this one. But again, they tried to be heavy-handed, but they also paid a price because they gave the Edmonton Oilers three power plays. So I'm sure that uh, Glenn Gullitson and Chris Knobloch, the coaching staff, as much as they fixate on the penalty kill, which has been flawless mm -hmm. for a long run here for the Edmonton Oilers, they're going to spend some time not just figuring out where that power play is lacking, but how to capitalize. Maybe it was a little bit of game one jitters. Yeah, and for Paul Maurice, it's it's a it's a lot more of what they're doing because that's that's the identity yeah. that's gotten them to this point, back to back Stanley Cup finals. They've got to play a hard, heavy game in on the four check, hounding. It's about discipline yeah. after the whistle. Between the whistles, for me, I think these guys got to go at it. Yeah. Well, and you look at like certain players need to account in the series at some point. It was a yeah. pretty quiet night for Matthew Great. Kachuk. Like yeah. we weren't we yeah. weren't really talking about Matthew Kachuk in this game. We talked. Yeah. about Barkov, we talked about the goal scorers, talk about Sam Bennett. So at some point, that's going to be a player that takes center stage in the series as well. Numbers already against the Oilers. Historically, 76% of teams who win game one win the series. That number goes up to 84% when you win on wow. home ice. Yeah. I mean, it matters because it's kind of strange, isn't it, that it's that large? It, because game ones numbers. are usually yeah. a feeling yeah. out process. 84% when you win on whole ice, but the Oilers just have to say we got to be part of that 16%. Uh, here's the thing about the Oilers. 5-1 and one in these playoffs after a loss. They've been terrific at bouncing back. They'll have their biggest bounce-back test yet in Game 2.